fundamentalist Matt Walsh is at it again. No, not this time in in uh, in in trafficking and transphobia. No, not this time in tracking uh, trafficking and misogyny. When you're on the Daily Wire, you got to hit the trifecta, and here it is again. And this is as old as time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, here is Matt Walsh opining on the way that films get made and complaining that mythical creatures, they're only supposed to be one race. All right, Max Winter says, a black actor playing The Little Mermaid really is a case of white erasure. All forms of art, including fairy tales, are meant to be reflections of the author's experiences and observations. Hans Christian Andersen probably based The Little Mermaid based on experiences second. he went Pause through. Pause it for one second. That's not true. No. No. <laughs> That's not true. They're just that, that first sort of assumption that he's starting off, like that, uh, that. It was a viewer, that but do, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, yeah. in fact, it's almost, well, I don't want to say that's never true, but one of the things in which you, why you uh, tell stories and create particularly fantastical stories, right? Because I, I got news for you. Hans Christian Andersen was not half fish. He also was not a half female fish. So, the idea that you that it's white erasure is just absurd. But of course, they they they're trying to adopt the language, I guess, of 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 you know social justice yeah. in some fashion. But let's just go back. So just everybody should know that first premise is just total bullshit. Also, like just to, we talked about this, but like the 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 crab guy or whatever, he has a Jamaican accent in the cartoon one so we shouldn't have Walsh had like had a big problem with that because I don't think Hans Christian Andersen wrote that into the no, 1830s well, version well what he did write in is the fact that this apparently the little mermaid was a metaphor for unrequited love for another man because that's that's fascinating I mean so it doesn't come into that does not come into the context I mean pride pride.com wrote this up and I'll check it out as the clip plays but like yeah that that is that's something that of course Matt Walsh's audience doesn't think about but you see their mindset right white erasure this is this is the kind of white supremacist garbage that he's peddling in and they they uh you know eat it up so uh, also um what's weird is that when I have read uh, The Little Mermaid, I've read it in English. Mm. Danish erasure, right there. Uh, unbelievable how, like, the idea that Hans Christian Andersen th contemplated the idea that he, what he wrote would be translated into other languages. But let's just uh, go back here as Matt Walsh explains the artistic process involved in the of you know a a version of this story that is made into a cartoon i, I mean there's just so much wrong with the I, that even that initial concept but go ahead all right, Max Winter says, a black actor playing The Little Mermaid really is a case of white erasure. All forms of art, including fairy tales, are meant to be reflections of the author's experiences and observations. Hans Christian Andersen probably based The Little Mermaid based on experiences he went through probably. in his home country of Denmark. So it makes sense that most of his characters would be white, since that's the world and the people he was surrounded by. Yeah, I'm given uh, the way to... Okay, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> he was not living at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And he did base it on his experiences. The original fairy tale was written by Danish author Hans Christian Andersen in 1837 as a love letter for a man named Edvard Collin. Andersen, who biographers believe was bisexual, crushed hard on Colin. This is how Pride is writing it up. Um, I languish for you as a blah, blah, blah. So they, they, they talk about like, um, you know, his love letters here. And but, this is what this was based on. But even this dumb thing that he's constructing. Like, yeah. Hans Christian Andersen did not cavort with mermaids. Yeah. No. So anybody who's the in Danish the Danish Sea is, does not look like that. <laughs> exactly. Let's see. Let's go. This is so dumb. It's unbelievable. It and I also love how character. they use other people to uh, traffic this, right? We just watched Dave Rubin uh, attack teachers by reading somebody else's comment 
and agreeing with it. They self-select these comments, incidentally. When we get IMs, I just read them as they come in. This is, we don't do this in advance. Go ahead. Including fairy tales are meant to be reflections of the author's experiences and observations. Hans Christian Andersen probably based The Little Mermaid based on experiences he went through in his home country of Denmark. So it makes sense that most of his characters would be white since that's the world and the people he was surrounded by. Yeah, I'm given the way that we deal with these sorts of issues. I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. Now, I would be fine, like we talked about yesterday. We don't have to rehash the entire thing. But if we all agreed that race in, in films and TV shows, especially fictional stories, don't matter, and we're going to take a kind of colorblind casting approach, and, uh, you know, it just it, it, it doesn't matter as long as the actor is good. If we could all agree on that, then I'd be on board. And as I said, that's basically what it was for many years, what it was back in the 90s. Pause it. What? This is just, first off, this guy doesn't know shit all about what he's talking about. These, they don't say, we're just going to ca- br- bring in anybody and we're just going to choose the best actor. That the never act happens. Off. <laughs> yeah. There's, that, 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 that doesn't happen. There is very specific, uh, there has always been, and I was an actor in the 90s, there is very specific description of who they want. Uh, like sometimes on films, but of course, this is all drawn anyways, right? I mean, this is an animated yeah. thing. No, it's a live oh, action real, movie. Live action. So, okay. so, and it's so, a black actress. She's a beautiful, beautiful singer. Okay. That's why they cast her. <laughs> yeah, merit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... But just the idea that in the 90s, uh, all they did was just say, well, send in the best actor for this role. I got That's why you got you. yours, That's, right? That, that, yeah. <laughs> they just said, send in the best actor. It isn't, we, we have no character description whatsoever. Only one guy can chew the steak like this, and we've got to find him. His name is Sam Cedar. Where is it's he? A, Bring him in. Also we only want like, one. But it's also, it's not animated, but it is a completely fictionalized character. Yeah. Like it's it's like it's not even based upon like it's a completely fictionalized character. There are no mermaids in which to base this story on. What? Well, I don't know if we want to open up that can of worms. I mean, well, geez. Uh, I'm going out on a limb. You're okay. gonna get us banned for misinformation, Sam. I'm not afraid to uh, say that. But go ahead. What if? Just it, it, it doesn't matter as long as the actor is good. If we could all agree on that, then I'd be on board. And as we I said, that's agree. basically what it was for many years. What it was back in the '90s. But what I cannot abide by Ooh, okay. is the double standard thing where we say, well, race, the race, the casting, uh, the race of, in, in casting matters only for certain races and not for others. That, that, no, no, we're not doing that. Ah, uh, we are. Also, by the way, <laughs> with The Little Mermaid, can, can we also just mention that just from, from, a, from a scientific perspective, okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have someone with darker skin who lives deep in the ocean. I mean, if anything, I mean, not only should the Little Mermaid be pale, she should actually be translucent. If you look at deep sea creatures, uh, they're like translucent. They have so no kind of pigmentation dumb. whatsoever. And they're just like these horrifying, they look like skeletons floating around in the ocean. That's what the Little Mermaid should look like. She should be totally pale where, and skeletal where you can see her skull through her face. And that would actually be a version of Little Mermaid that I would watch. Nice. So why aren't you mad, dude, about the original cartoon version? Because she doesn't look like Skeletor. You should be upset that the original Disney cartoon had her with red flowing hair and white skin. She should be a translucent, loosened deep sea fish, I guess. You, you know, I think like it's it would be easy for us to skip over what Matt Walsh has accomplished with this. <laughs> Because a lot of people say, oh, he's just being ignorant about what casting does. Or, oh, he's just being racist. But he's also managed to be ignorant about science simultaneously in this brief little segment. Would you please bring up the so-called gulper eel? I think they're, what else do they call this? The, the, they call pelican it eel. Yeah, the pelican eel. It is a deep sea rarely seen by humans eel that you will see uh is rather dark um and but but also like how does he know where mermaids live I, yeah like, i mean what is the yeah, science about mermaids she's in a coral reef in that 
cartoon. So that's not off the coast of Denmark, bro. Yeah, like it's on the there's, tram. there's a bunch of different colorful fish. Well, but here. Uh, oh, I know what they're running on. They're uh, they're trying to run on the fact that trans people are taking over every single position in society as a means in which to indoctrinate all of our children. Um, here is Dave Rubin. He's still an expectant father, correct? Is no, the, kid uh, the kids have arrived. Uh, oh, they have? Actually. Yep. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, I can't wait to so. start watching the bags under the eyes grow. But um, here is uh, Dave Rubin uh, opining about what he wants to do to protect his kids. Elizabeth says a lot of acti activists are pushing for puberty blockers on children, and some are even saying that everyone should be placed on them until they can decide no. which gender pause they want to be. Pause, I know that sounds pause it. Pause it. This is a total 100% unmitigated lie. I mean, mm -hmm. first off, I don't think there's just single as, as like, there's nothing that you can't find a substantial number of people who advocate for. I think something like, you know, like 10% of uh, American society believes the earth is flat. Okay. So there's, it, it is almost impossible to find something that you couldn't attribute to a person and not find that person. I don't think you can find a single person who is in any way advocating puberty blockers for all children. And by the or way, pushing the, puberty blockers, it's absurd. Yeah, this misinformation is having incredibly serious consequences. We just ta were talking about yesterday how at the Boston Children's Hospital, there was a bomb threat. And yep. that's the direct result of the hate speech coming from the account Libs of TikTok run by Chaya Rachik. Uh, that's her name. Repeat it. And um, and other people like Dave Rubin, who's so happy to throw uh, LG, uh, trans people under the bus because he's trying to like insulate himself yep. um, from from criticism for being gay. All right, go back and let's watch this. Elizabeth says a lot of acti activists are pushing for puberty blockers on children, and some are even saying that everyone should be placed on them until they can decide which gender they want to be. I know that sounds nuts, but that's actually true. No, How can we no, put a stop not. to this kind of insanity? Should the parental rights education bill in Florida be adopted in other states, or is that still enough? Look, that's a start. That is a start, but it is not enough. So first off, of course, every state should model the don't say gay bill, which had nothing to do with being gay, and simply that you do not want six-year-olds being taught anything about sexuality or gender by state educators, and state educators, and especially if they can keep that information private from the parents. Just imagine, I mean, I've thought about this. So now Justin's six years old, he's in first grade. Imagine if I, I found out that actually for three months, there was a teacher talking to him about gender or sexuality, maybe calling him Justine instead of Justin, <laughs> and I didn't know about that. I might kill that person. That's where we're at, right? So unless you don't want these people killed, and I mean this somewhat <laughs> flippantly, mm. Um, mm. like it's, they, they want to abuse children. They want to abuse children. That is abuse. I don't mean that as overt sexual abuse, but it is an abuse of a child. First off, the idea that a teacher would call his son Justine uh, on a whim or based upon just their, a unilateral decision as opposed to being asked to do so by the kid or by the parent. I, I've, I've known um, six-year-olds who have just completely on their own said to their parents, I'm a girl, I'm not a boy. That's the and, typical actual route. And and um, they wanted to dress as a girl and the parents were like, fine. And then at one point, uh, the kid decided, actually, no, I'm a boy. The teachers would never and the teachers were fine with it. They were actually they were fine with it, but they would never just decide on their own. We're going to misgender a child out of the blue. And the other thing that Dave Rubin should start doing is reading up on parenting because sex education experts say six year old is exactly the time where you start to talk about sex to children because it is the first time they, they a have questions and B 
six-year-olds, for people who haven't had children or haven't, uh, or I guess it's been a long time since you had children, six-year-olds are like much more like uh, aware of what's going on than uh, I think most people would contemplate unless you have a six-year-old. They say to talk to six-year-olds, specifically six-year-olds, because they are young enough where or they they're old enough where they actually have some questions around this and they're also young enough that they still listen <laughs> about these things and they haven't been you know sort of like they haven't been adopted the shame that uh, exists in our society about it and more often than not you get about halfway through you tell them the major details of about sex and they're like okay that's enough and it's there before they start hearing rumors and learning things that are incorrect about uh, sexuality. And it's uh, that's what experts will will say. That's when I certainly when I talk to my kids about sexuality for the first time. Um, and, uh, you know, Ruben's just saying that on the end. And of course, he's not going to kill anybody. He's not yeah. going to he's not going to. Yeah. He's, He's not even going to do anything outside of like, you know, sit in uh, his uh, studio and say stuff that uh, will have kids picked on. That's and basically it. And then and, and teachers losing their jobs. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, and uh, on the puberty blockers note, like the important thing to say was like, yes, nobody is actually calling for, nobody serious is actually calling to put every child on puberty blockers. But also when he says puberty blockers for children, like who else would you give puberty blockers to? You need to give pu puberty blockers to a 45 year old. Puberty <laughs> blockers are medication uh, that have a broad range of uses. Um, for instance, like short stature. I, I heard from a listener who was put on puberty blockers because there was some developmental stuff. Um, there's precocious puberty reason for that too but also with gender stuff puberty blockers are used for kids who have socially transitioned so they've been called justine for a while and they're now facing the uh, prospect of going through a puberty in a gender that they don't identify with and those are the children who give puberty blockers with the doctor's uh, care and also like he's saying this from within the context of florida where he where they have this don't say gay bill and he's talking about how he would kill a person if they decide to to misgender in his opinion or to call out of the blue his justin justine that that is direct in sec or not direct but it is a violent rhetoric towards teachers in florida and within that context like they already are, have violence directed at them so just understand what he's trafficking in there it's violence against teachers who might be affirming a child in a way that a bigoted parent like Dave Rubin or people listening to him might not approve of. Yeah, it's and also um, uh, Antifa Lockhart uh, brings up on the I am you you need to teach bodily autonomy to kids at that age. In fact, maybe even a little bit younger not necessarily uh, sexual stuff, but there are certain areas where you say these are private parts. These are, you know, you don't let um, you have to you protect know, uh, them. people. Exactly. And this is part of, of teaching children. Like, it, it's just absurd. I mean, it's both. It's it, it's it's it really is stunning. And the amazing thing that they've been able to effectively do here by demonizing teachers is they have made it seem as if the teachers are going around the parents rather than this really is. There is not a single child in this country that gets puberty blockers if their gar legal guardians don't want them to. The, you need, like there's, a child does not have the ability to go off and get their own puberty blockers. Their legal guardian has to sign off. Age six, age, well, obviously they wouldn't get it until age 13. But, I mean, to even bring up puberty blockers in the context of six-year-olds is absurd, too. But there's not, you need to, the, the parents are involved in this decision. But they try to skirt around it as if it's a parent's rights issue. They're, they're taking on well, field what, trips. What do you think the parents of these kids are doing? They're the ones who are taking them to Boston Children's Hospital or they're taking them to get treatment. It's just, it's so twisted. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, 
Road Rider says, you know, it'd be great if you dedicated Fridays to just phone calls. Freaky phone Friday. You have my permission to use that. We may use it. We did it like two weeks ago. Maybe it's the other thing. If you want to apply science to the story of the Little Mermaid, then the Little Mermaid is just a kid who lives down the block who pretends they're a mermaid, as opposed to there being a real mermaid. Science does not really have anything to say about a half woman, half fish. Has he ever gone fishing? Like there are dark fish that get hooked on your line like all yeah, the time. He's saying it's really, really deep fish down where mermaids live. Which, of course, we all know we've seen The Little Mermaid and it's pitch dark in that for most of the film. And it's hard to know what's going on. Right. It's exactly. so deep in like the Mariana, Mariana. The or whatever. Right. And that's why when she comes on, uh, comes up to the surface, her body completely explodes because she, yeah, no, she longer can't raise too fast. <laughs> she no longer has the pressure. I was going to say, I was going to say, Emma, spoiler alert. She <laughs> reaches the surface. She, and she just, just like disintegrates and dies <laughs> i just think it's so unbelievable that a mermaid would not be translucent and we wouldn't see her skull but like i can't get into it that's when i that's what hey you imagine like that's what my kid said uh that's what uh Mila and saul both were like Ugh, this doesn't make any sense at all it's not scientific uh the mermaid should look like a skeletor and it's just like gross and i know like the the I, there are the videos circling around of, of young black girls watching this and like saying oh she looks like me I mean you have to be such a monster not to think that that's at least a little bit heartwarming it's 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 beautiful you're you're like a loser and I can tell you from my own experience in the nineties I did a predominantly as an actor a predominantly black show it was on for I think nine episodes. Uh, it was done by the creators of Martin. That was basically a uh, retelling of their uh, experience as the head writer on the Martin uh, show. I played the head writer and I can tell you that all the, there was never a single audition after that, that I did. And I did nine other pilots after that one, maybe eight other pilots Network pilot. In the nineties, it was just like the best actor comes in the door. No, I walk into a room. Well, version of me. Or right. I look like some version of them. White. I mean, there was a joke on our show that uh, they, I think they actually wrote into the episode. Friends was really big at that time. This mm -hmm. was in 96, 97. And they were talking about like, how is it possible that there's. Yeah, Sam, you're, you're, I just want you to know that your connection's a little bit shoddy. Oh. Well, I don't yeah. know what's going on. Um, Luckily we're, yeah, we're close. We're, we're wrapping up. Yeah. You're, you're, but, you're, you're down on the, uh, yeah. So, okay. okay. So they said, uh, the, the joke was, how is it that friends they can ha find a monkey in New York City, but they can't, um, they can't find a black person. It wasn't because there was no good actors in L.A. They couldn't find it. We had, uh, uh, it's just they didn't cast any black people. Yeah, like you can name the amount of like, like, like you know, supporting characters who are black on Friends, and it's literally just jo Joey's girlfriend Charlie. And they like, try to do, it. yeah, and that's yeah, in like season, season nine. That? It was yeah. the last, it's or like, the second to last yeah, season. Probably three seasons left. And the way now. they write her too, it's just like, oh god, she, it's it's so like, oh, she's also just like brilliant scientist. She's so and, smart, right? And perfect person. Yeah, it's just so, so over the top.